In this week's episode, we bring you a heart-wrenching story of a two-days-old baby who was left to die by his Gurmit parents on the shores of an estate on Now Island. When my grandfather was born, my great-grandmother's uh, breast didn't function, so it could not give any milk, express any milk. His mom, Patty, could not breastfeed him, and being far from the hospital with no idea at all of the local herbal medicine, as they have just arrived from South India, the couple saw it best to desert the little boy. What uh, they decided amongst themselves, the husband and wife, was to put the baby, which was about one or two days old, in a hammock and let them go to the garden uh, to plant coconut. And when they come back, that the child would be dead by then and they will bury the child. Left behind by his Gilmit parents alone in a hammock, by the shores of Tawutu Estate on Now Island, a two days old baby endlessly cried as his parents left him to die. But the echoes of his helpless cry were certainly not in vain. Group of women from Sawayeke village who were out collecting seafood and seashells for their families heard the baby's cries and came to his rescue. The two days old baby is the son of Gurmit couple Van Kat and Patti Naidu who arrived on Nukulau Island in 1915 on board the vessel SS Madla 3. If it wasn't for Mumbulitia, if she hadn't fed my grandfather, Nani Tokawa, we would never been in this world. Their grandson, Ben Naidu, a very well-known businessman in Lomaiviti spoke to us about what transpired and how the women from Sawayeke took his grandfather and looked after him for 10 years and the elders of Sawayeke village named him Sinu Lelewasa. Our great-grandfather, uh, Venkat Naidu, as he was originally known, uh, came in from India from a place called uh, Arsampat in uh, Tamil Nadu, from uh, South India to Nukulau. Uh, then they were all, the, the whole lot of people, who, the indentured laborers who came there, they all, they were all uh, disembarked at Nukulau. So they remained there uh, in a quarantine station. In a quarantine station, and uh, at that time there were a lot of European estate owners around in Fiji, in Lao, in Lomaiviti, and in various other, other parts of the country. But uh, our area of contention here is Lomaiviti. So um, there was this gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. R uh, Ronald Fry. Mr. Ronald Fry, uh, after taking word from uh, the Governor General. So after I got in Lebuka, uh, uh, Mr. Ronald Fry came in from Ngau, where he had his estate at Tautu in Ngau, just beside Soweke, uh, say maybe 500 or 600 meters away from the village of Soweke, his uh, Tautu estate, that's where his uh, estate was. So uh, Mr. Fry came in to look for his set of laborers. So when he came to Nukulau, then he found amongst the hundreds of people there, my great-grandfather, Venkat Naidu, or John Naidu, John Venkat Naidu. I was told that uh, why this old man picked uh, my great-grandfather but was that because he was quite, he was quite a tough, stocky fellow, eh? and they, they picked him to take him across to work at his copper plantation in uh, Tautu, in Soweke, in Ngau. So, um, uh, they picked him, they chose him, and uh, then he said, okay, I'm agreeing to go to where you are, when you take me, where, whether you agree or not, you have, once the, the European uh, masters have picked you, you have to go. So he said, that's my wife. But, you know, so he chose Patty, my great-grandmother, while she was coming down. Just before they left for now, there were some rituals done by the elders at Nukulau. 
to bring these two together as husband and wife. So they met on the boat. They met on the boat. So because uh, they, when uh, these people came, they had priests and mm. various and doctors and Ayurvedic people. They were all on the boat. So they quickly did uh, perform uh, this ritual, and they went away from here as husband and wife. One of the problems that they encountered there was that the food was one problem, but they had taken a lot of their own seeds, etc. Uh, to plant their own food. They uh, took their own masala seeds and hardi and uh, jira, sarso and things like that, rice. They took all their seeds with them. Little, but they started planting their own because uh, they weren't used to tapioca and they weren't used to eating dalo and all that. So tamarind. And tamarind, they took tamarind. Tamarind tree is in... Uh, is in uh, so now they today. There. They planted there. And then uh, one year down the line, uh, my grandfather was born, my father's father was born. So this is where the real story starts. Uh, when my grandfather was born, um, uh, my great-grandmother's uh, breast didn't function. So it could not give any, express any milk. So they tried her best, the old lady tried her best to express the, the milk from her breast for the kid, but it wouldn't happen. So. Uh, so what uh, my uh, what uh, they decided amongst themselves, the husband and wife, was to put the baby, which was about one or two days old, in a hammock, and let them go to the garden uh, to plant coconut. And when they come back, that the child would be dead by then, and they will bury the child. While they were up in the bush planting coconut. Um, uh, the baby was crying profusely, eh? was heavily crying, crying. Sabia kana, you want to want to eat. So uh, there was a set of ladies from Saweke. Eh? Uh, they were uh, looking for shells, collecting shells, etc., on the beach. So as they came closer towards uh, Tautu, they said, hey, sa tangi chicken dono one. And there was about ten of them, the ladies. Eh? And one of them is uh, one of the ladies in contention is our Mumbu, Litia. So she had just given birth to one week prior to collecting shells. So when she came uh, across to uh, Tautu and then uh, they saw the hammock, they said, so somebody says, and uh, they went and checked, the baby was there. And she said, ooh, Savia Kana. And she quickly picked the baby up, Bumbulitia picked the baby up, and breastfed, gave one of her breasts to the baby, and contently uh, ate, drank milk, and then slept. And the, the lot, the whole lot of those little women, the ten of them, they stayed there. They waited. They said, Towawai ke, meadawna This is the story that was told to us, eh? that uh, whoever this baby belongs to will come and, and check this baby out in the afternoon. They, you, you can't tell at that time whether it's an Indian baby or Fijian baby, because the baby is in a ru, eh? two days old. So when they came down from uh, the bush, uh, then they were surprised to see the ten Fijian ladies there, Itokei ladies, and they got their baby, and the baby is drinking milk from the breast. And uh, they were happy at one uh, on one side of it, and on the other side of the coin, they were like worried and surprised that who are these people? Because they're not used to seeing, uh, you know, uh, Itoki people at that time. Upon their arrival at the hammock, they found the helpless baby crying, and so they decided to stay with him because they wanted to find his parents. One of them, known as Mbumbulitia, who had just given birth to a son, then breastfed baby Sinu Lelewasa and took him in as her own. They exchanged gestures with each other and then it was decided that this baby would be taken to the village, to Saweke. And uh, the two, my great-grandfather and great-grandmother agreed that the baby should be taken away because they couldn't feed the baby. So the baby was taken to, to Saweke, baby boy, and uh, the people of uh, Saweke named him, this our family of ours, named my grandfather Sinu Lele Wasa. That's why my previous ships were called Sinuasa. I just shortened the name to Sinuasa because the name Sinu Lele Iwasa was too long to write on the boat, to print on the boat. So I just 
shortened it to Sinuasa. Sinu Lelewasa grew up in the village with Luke Vatete, who was a week older. Tukai Luke, as known by the Naidu family, was the son of Bumbulitia, and these two considered themselves brothers. After 10 years of living in the village, he returned home and his dad, Venkat, named him Shiri Nawasan because he wanted to keep a similar name to Sinu Lele Wasa. The gist of this whole story is that if it wasn't for Mumbulitia, if she hadn't fed my grandfather, Nani Tokawa, we would never have been in this world. Mm. See? That's true. Yeah. So we are cherishing it that way. We are looking after it that way. Mm -hmm. So that's why we are we are very close. So Tukailuke is like the link to the Vatete. So they brought um, so Sino, Tukaisino and Tukailuke grew up together like brothers, like blood brothers, because they were connected through the breast. My grandfather, my grandfather Sino, he could not uh, converse very well in Hindustani. Yeah, he could not. Uh, and um, it was the same for us too because when we came in from Lebuka it was a struggle for us to speak in Hindustani and then because we were speaking m mostly in, uh, in neither in Fijian or in English mm. and Hindi, we used to speak Hindi but not as good as uh, now we speak much better because there's a lot of and watching movies eh? and watching <laughs> movies and we pick up eh? But otherwise, when we came in, I even used to be shy to talk to anybody in Hindustani because they make, make fun of us. Yes. So I had to pick and choose who I can speak to in Hindi when, when we came in here. And that was not a very long time ago. That was only 1980. Sinu Lelewasa continued to work in shipping companies, and he married a woman from Lambasa whose parents also arrived from India during the Gurumit era. So that's when uh, these, uh, quite a lot of the uh, indentured laborers of the South Indian clan were released, they went into Koro. Koro offered them a land where they could plant and make a life for themselves. So quite a lot of South Indians from various parts of the country, they ended up in Koro. So uh, my grandfather uh, Venkat, um, that was in uh, Ngau, he moved to Nandogu, which is beside Nasau. Nandogu estate, which is beside Nasau village in Koro. And uh, so my grandmother Vanya was there, living with the father and mother. And uh, the other grandfather, his uh, Rangasami counter, he is in the paternal side. He, is, he was at uh, Nambukete estate. So then the word went after a couple of years, hey, there's a lady, there's a girl down there, el eligible spinster at uh, Mundu. That's the Tikina Mundu, Tikina Rawa, Idake, and Ira. So he said, uh, there's a lady at uh, Mundu. Uh, why don't we make some arrangements to get him married to the boy from Rawa? And the boy from Rawa was my, grandf my grandfather. So they made the arrangements and they got married to Sinu, got married to Vani. And their offspring was the eldest of my our father. And they named him uh, Taniala Sudhu Ngau. My grandfather's born in Ngau, my father's born in Koro, and we were born in, like I was born in Levuka, Dorothy. And uh, you know, it's taken us some time. Traditionally, my grandfather then came in the Sinu, started running his boat, you know, in this island, in those islands. By the way, the gentleman sitting behind you is just Manasa Naidu. And his grandfather is my grandfather's brother. So he's named after his grandfather Manasa. So his grandfather Manasa too, Tata Manasa, had his own boat travel, going to and fro. But what I'm trying Manasa to say... Manasa and your grandfather brother? Yeah, Manasa Naidu. Okay. And uh, so... Um, uh, you know, uh, there's something in this telepathy which has really, s which is sending us back to Lomaiviti. And when we go to Lomaiviti Islands, we feel so much at home. They settled in Levuka, had children, and their grandson, Mr. Naidu, believes that the life lived by Sinulele Wasa in easily adapting to the village life in Sawayake only proves that love conquers all.
Love can prevail over any obstacle. Uh, when I first uh, went to school, then uh, cl class one, class two, class three, and when I think I reached about class four, and somebody is saying to me, Kainjia, Kainjia, Kainjia. And then I was wondering, why, look, look at him, I mean, the back he's saying Kainjia. That's in Lebuka. In Lebuka. Then I went home and asked my mom, I said, Mom, what is Kainjia? This fellow is saying, telling, saying Kainjia to me, Kainjia to me. <laughs> and I went, went to ask, but because we did not know what, you, you never know, knew. never knew. You just knew it's okay. Though. Yeah, because we used to speak in the Itokei language and in English, and in English. Oh, but yeah. I must say that the Itokei people, they're very humble and they're very kind-hearted. And, uh, but we reciprocated to it the same way, yeah? and, uh, and uh, as uh, the kids from the other side grew up, then my grandfather then came into Lebuka, he started operating out of, uh, he was getting a bit older, then, so he said, hey, and they come and went to school from here, from, uh, from my grandfather's house. So all of those kids, most of those kids, came and stayed in my grandfather's house wow. in no in Lebuka now oh, okay. and went to school to public school or Tundela now. You know what they stayed in yeah. Until today the two families meet and hold traditional and family functions together. We live happily. We don't uh, we don't have any racial tension look at all my children. Mm -hmm. They're all uh, part yeah. these uh, kids here yeah, they're all part Indian, part uh, Fijian, part uh, you know uh, so there's no problem. But then the new generation have come up and uh, then the, they are like my children sage and um, so uh, they haven't left off. Wherever we are weak, the kids have taken over. They picked up. And they've created their own awareness to, hey, these people are our real family. Let's connect. So that's why last year, Natasha and who, you and? Yeah. Oh, and Litya, the namesake, Bumbu Litya's namesake. They got together and uh, then got the group together. Yeah. And there are, how, how many of you, Natasha? Over 50 of them. Over 50 of them.